Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Michael Levan, and in this video, we are going to learn how to use Kate's GPT on a cluster that's bootstrapped with KubeADM. Now, it, that actually doesn't matter. <laughs> you can run it anywhere if you're on AKS, EKS, GKE, doesn't matter. But in my case, I have a couple Ubuntu boxes and they're bootstrapped with KubeADM. So we can see right here in Proxmox, I have one control plane, two worker nodes, of course, this is not highly available at all. <laughs> Again, this is just my dev environment, okay? Now, one thing that I do wanna point out is that if you don't already have Brew installed, go ahead and do that. Whether you're on a Linux box, whether you're on Mac, install Brew because we're gonna need that when we're installing Kate's GPT. All right, so now let's go ahead and start the installation. So first things first, I'm just gonna go ahead and run the Brew install command and the tap so we can bring down that library and get everything installed. All right, let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. Now, the next thing that we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to generate an API key for OpenAI. Why is that? Well, if we go ahead and if we just look at the code here under the Kate's GPT repo, I'm gonna to go to CMD, I'll go to analyze for example, because that's the command that we're gonna see in a little bit. But if I go ahead and if I just search OpenAI, you can see that OpenAI is being used on the back end. So that's why we need to generate that API key. All right, so let's go ahead and generate that. All right, now I do not have an account. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click sign up. I'm gonna go through with an email address. I'm gonna pick my demo email account. I'm gonna click continue. I'm gonna put in my phone number here. All right, I'm gonna enter in that code that I just received. All right, so now let me go ahead and create a new key. And as we can see, I now have a key available. So I'm gonna go back to VS Code. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in K8S GPT off, put in my API key, and as you can see, we're added. All right, so now let's go ahead and run a quick scan. So we'll run Kate's GPT analyze. All right, and as you can see, I do have a few errors here. I have the uh, infamous sock shop demo app deployed in this Kubernetes cluster, and we can see a few different errors here that are happening, of course, in the database pieces. <laughs> and there's a couple in Vault and RabbitMQ as well. So for example, we can see this error here is saying zero out of three nodes are available. So if we go ahead and if we just do a quick kubectl get nodes, what well, we can see that makes sense because even though there are three nodes here, there are only two worker nodes. So we can see that failure very easily. Now what's cool about this is I didn't have to do something like this. This is really the power behind what we're seeing here right now. So let's just keep that pod name in mind, right? So let's say I didn't run Kate's GPT. Well, you run kubectl get namespace. Okay, we have a vault namespace. kubectl get pods namespace vault. Okay, vault zero pending. All right, well, let's take a look at this. kubectl logs vault zero namespace. There's a reason why I'm doing this, by the way. I'm, I'm making a point here, but <laughs> okay. All right, so there's no logs that are coming out. So now let's do describe. So describe pod. All right, boom. And as we can see, we have that error here. So those are a lot of steps that I just had to take to troubleshoot what was happening in my environment. Whereas if I just run literally this command, boom, there's my error. So again, that's the power behind what we're kind of seeing here is the ability to just troubleshoot quickly. And that's kind of what we want to do. We don't want to have to go through a ton of logs. We don't have to want to go through a ton of describes. We don't want to have to go through this namespace, that namespace, look at that resource, look at this resource from a Kubernetes perspective. That's, uh, it, it gets cumbersome, especially if we're just trying to troubleshoot quick. So the cool thing about this tool is, yeah, like we still need to have Kubernetes knowledge. Yeah, we still need to understand what pods are and what services are and, and nodes and all that stuff. It's just making our lives a little bit easier. So that's a quick run through on Kate's GPT. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you again next time.